In the last few days, a bunch of folks reached out requesting a video on this stunning scroll animation from the GTA 6 website. When I first saw it, even I was instantly captivated and knew it would be an exciting challenge to recreate this effect from scratch. As you can see, when scrolling down, the logo and the content of this section smoothly fade away while the hero image zooms out. Then, the logo cinematically starts coming into view as a cutout window while still revealing the background through its shape. As you scroll more, some text emerges with a smooth gradient fade. I'm not gonna lie, when I started trying to rebuild this, it turned out way more complex than I expected. But after about 7 hours and trying out like 4 different approaches, I was finally able to replicate the scroll animation using SVGs, GSAP and scroll trigger. The technique I landed on uses an SVG masking approach for the reveal effect. Basically, I created an SVG mask with a path inside it that defines the logo shape and then applied this mask to a rectangle covering the viewport. That created sort of a window in the shape of the logo that reveals what's underneath while hiding everything else. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to recreate the same effect yourself. If you find these videos helpful, a like and subscribe would really mean a lot. Also, if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects along with a complete website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Before we dive into coding, let's go through the assets we'll need for this project. First, we need a background image for hero section. I'm using this vibrant GTA themed artwork from 4kwallpapers.com but you can substitute any image you prefer. Next, we need a foreground image with just the characters isolated on a transparent background. This is crucial for our layering effect. It allows us to place the logo behind the characters but in front of the background. We'll stack these elements with the background at the bottom, logo in the middle and character image on the top. Next, for the logo, I've created this simple PNG version in Figma. You can use any logo design that works for your project. Most importantly, you'll also need an SVG version of your logo. After exporting from your design tool, open the SVG in any browser and extract the path data from it. This path information is essential for creating our mask effect. To make this easier, I've created a separate file called logo.js that exports this path data as a string variable named logo data. We'll import this into our main script and use it to create the mask that reveals our background through the logo shape. With these assets prepared, we are ready to start building our HTML structure. We'll need two main sections, a hero section which will contain our animation and an outro section that appears after scrolling. Inside the hero section, I am first adding a div with the class hero image container that will hold our layered images. Within this container, I am placing the background image as the first element. This will be our main backdrop. Next, I am adding another div with the class name hero image logo which contains our logo image. This logo will initially be visible but will fade out as we scroll. Then, I am adding our second layer image. This is isolated character image that will appear on top of everything else. Below that, I am adding a div with the class hero image copy containing a paragraph text. Now, outside the image container, I am adding a fade overlay div which will help create a fade effect as we scroll. The next element is crucial, a div with the class name overlay containing an SVG. This is where the magic happens. Inside the SVG, I have defined a mask called logo reveal mask which contains a full screen rectangle and a path element with the id logo mask. This path will be populated with our logo data from JavaScript. Then, I am applying this mask to a full screen rectangle filled with a dark color. This creates our mask effect where the logo shape will reveal the content underneath. I am also adding an empty logo container div which will be used as a reference point for positioning our logo mask. Then, there is an overlay copy div containing an h1 with our text that will appear later in the scroll sequence. Finally, the outro section will have some placeholder text that will be visible after scrolling past the animation. That would be it for the HTML structure. Let's get to styling now. First, you can see I've imported the DMSense font from Google Fonts. Now let's start by resetting all default browser margins, paddings and ensuring box sizing is set to border box. For the body, I am setting our font family to DMSense, giving it a dark background color and white text. I am also hiding any horizontal overflow to prevent unwanted scroll bars. I am setting all images to take up 100% of their container's width and height with object fit cover to maintain aspect ratios. For typography, I am styling the H1 elements to be uppercase, giving a large font size with tight line spacing and slightly negative letter spacing for that modern look. 
Paragraphs are also styled to be uppercase but smaller and with medium font weight. Each section will take up the full viewport width and height with relative positioning so we can absolutely position elements inside them. I am setting the background to match our body color and hiding any overflow. For our hero image container and its styled images as well as the fade overlay, I am absolutely positioning them to fill the entire container. The logo image gets special treatment, it's positioned 20% from the top and centered horizontally. I am setting a specific width and allowing the height to adjust automatically while maintaining the aspect ratio. The scroll prompt text is positioned at the bottom of the screen and centered. I am adding will change opacity to optimize the animation performance. Our fade overlay is given a white background and will gradually change opacity during scrolling. The overlay that contains our SVG mask is positioned absolutely but with 200% height and a Z index of 1 to ensure it sits above our images. I am setting its transform origin to the center horizontally and 15% vertically which will control how it scales. Now for the logo container, this is crucial. I am positioning it fixed at 25% from the top and centered horizontally. This position is important because it determines where your logo mask will appear. You'll likely need to adjust this value based on your specific logo. In my case, I wanted the zoom effect to happen through the eye character present in the last line in my logo, so 25% worked well. Different logos will require different positioning, so be prepared to experiment with this value. The overlay copy that contains our text is positioned near the bottom of the viewport with a Z index of 2 to ensure it appears above the other elements. For this text, I am using the background clip technique to create a text mask that will reveal a gradient background later in our JavaScript. I am setting the transform origin to the center top which will control how it scales during animation. The outro section text is simply centered horizontally and vertically using flex layout. Finally, I am adding some responsive adjustments for smaller screens, reducing font sizes and ensuring the overlay copy takes the full width on mobile devices. Let's get to JavaScript now and bring this page to life. First, I am importing the necessary dependencies, the logo data from our logo.js file which contains the SVG path data, gsep for handling our animations, scroll trigger plugin for gsep which will trigger animations based on scroll position, lenis a smooth scrolling library to make the experience more polished. After importing these, I am registering the scroll trigger plugin with gsep so we can use it. Now I am wrapping everything in a DOM content loaded event listener to make sure our code only runs after the page has fully loaded. Inside this event listener, I am setting up Lenis for smooth scrolling, will create a new Lenis instance and tells it to update scroll trigger whenever scrolling happens. You can find this block of code on the documentation website. I have used it as is without any change. Now I am selecting all DOM elements we will need to animate the container with our background images, the logo that appears at the beginning, the scroll down text, the white overlay that will fade in, the SVG overlay that contains our mask, the heading text that will appear later in the animation. These selections give us references to manipulate these elements as the user scrolls. Next, I am setting up the logo mask and its dimensions. I start by defining an initial scale value of 350 for our overlay. This is a really large number that determines how zoomed in the mask will be at the beginning. You can play around this value based on your logo type. I am selecting the logo container we defined in our HTML and the logo mask element from our SVG. Now comes an important step. I am setting the D attribute of our SVG path to use the logo data we imported. This is what defines the actual shape of our logo in the SVG mask. To position the logo properly, I need to figure out both the size and the position of our container and the SVG path. For the container, I am using get bounding client rect function which gives me its exact position and dimensions on the page. For the SVG path, I am using get bounding box method which tells me the dimensions of our logo shape. Now I am calculating scaling factors. This is important because our SVG logo path needs to properly fit within our container. 
I am dividing the container's width by the path's width to get the horizontal scale and the container's height by the path's height to get the vertical scale. Then I am taking the smaller one to preserve the logo's shape without stretching it. The positioning calculations help center our logo. I am starting with the container's position, then adding an offset to center the logo and finally adjusting for the logo's internal coordinates. This ensures the logo appears exactly where we want it in our mask. Finally, I am applying these calculations to position and scale our SVG path using the transform attribute. This tells the browser exactly where to place our logo mask and how large it should be. These precise calculations are what allow our effect to work with any logo shape and size. Without them, the mask wouldn't align properly and our reveal effect wouldn't work correctly. Next, I am creating our scroll trigger instance. This is what will control all of our effects as the user scrolls down the page. I'll first set up the scroll trigger with some important options. I am using hero section as the trigger element which means our animation will start when this section enters the viewport. I am setting start to top so the animation begins right away when the top of our hero section reaches the top of the viewport. For the end value, I am setting it to 5 times the viewport height. This means our animation will take place over a long scroll distance giving us plenty of room to create a smooth gradual effect. I am also enabling pin which keeps our hero section fixed on screen while the animation plays and pin spacing which maintains the scroll height. The scrub value of 1 creates a slight delay between scrolling and the animation updating making it feel smoother. Next, I am defining what happens during the scroll in the onUpdate callback. This function receives a self parameter that contains information about the scroll progress. I'll start by getting the current scroll progress which is a value between 0 and 1 representing how far through the animation we are. Then I'm calculating the fade opacity for our initial elements. For the first 15% of scrolling, I want the logo and scroll text to gradually fade out. I'm calculating this with a formula that converts our progress to an opacity value between 1 and 0. If this scroll progress is below 15%, I'm setting the opacity of these elements based on our calculation. Otherwise, I am setting their opacity to 0 to keep them hidden. Next, for the first 85% of scrolling, I am handling the scaling effects. First, I am normalizing the progress to a 0-1 range within this portion of the scroll. I am calculating the scale of our hero image container starting at 1.5 and gradually reducing to 1 as we scroll. This creates that zoom out effect for the background. For the overlay scale, I am using a formula that starts at our large initial overlay scale value and gradually reduces it to 1. The power function helps create a smooth exponential transition instead of a linear one. This is what creates the effect of zooming out through the logo shape. After 25% of scrolling, I start fading in our white overlay. I am calculating its opacity to smoothly transition from 0 to 1 between 25% and 65% of the scroll. Finally, I am applying these calculated values using GSAP's set method which updates the properties right away. Now for the final part of our scroll animation, I am adding the text reveal effect that happens between 60% and 85% of our scroll progress. When the scroll progress is between 0.6 and 0.85, I want to gradually reveal our heading text with a smooth gradient effect. First, I am calculating a normalized progress value just for this specific section of the scroll, converting it from a 0 to 1 range. I am setting a gradient spread of 100 which determines how sharp or gradual our text reveal will be. Then, I am calculating the position of the gradient's bottom edge starting at 240 and moving upward as we scroll. The gradient's top edge is positioned 100 pixels above the bottom edge. Then, I am scaling the text slightly as it appears starting from 1.25 times its normal size and reducing it to 1 as we scroll. This creates a subtle zoom effect on the text itself. Now comes the cool part. I am setting a linear gradient as the background for our text. The gradient starts with our dark background color at the top, then transitions to a reddish color at the bottom. The gradient positions are dynamically calculated based on our scroll progress. Because we set the text to use background clip text in our CSS, only the text itself shows this gradient. As we scroll, the gradient moves upward through the text, creating that smooth reveal effect from bottom to top. I am also gradually increasing the opacity of the entire text element as we scroll through this section. If the scroll progress is less than 0.6, I am keeping the text completely invisible by setting its opacity to 0. And with that, our scroll trigger setup is complete. 
this configuration creates the entire animated sequence hope you found the video helpful see you in the next one